Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from 1st Samael. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voices only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words to the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers." He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. 
But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, come, let us go to Gilgal and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal and they made Saul the king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is number 138, which we will read responsibly by half verse. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name. And your word of all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of the Lord, the blood of your servant, do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For the slight momentary afflictions is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measures. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen, for what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people would be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. God before us, God beside us, God behind us, God above us, be also now between us a bridge through which your truth may move. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Decisions. We all have decisions to make today, don't we? A lot of them, in a lot of ways. Where do we focus our attention? Where do we spend our time? What controls our vision? Because what controls our vision, what we're looking at in this life and in this world, often controls us, ultimately, and our actions. I don't know about you, but as I get older, um, they called the prophet Samuel old. Well, people, call me, my kids call me that all the time. They say, okay, boomer, I'm not even a boomer, right? Um, but if I'm looking off in the distance at something, I will, I used to be able to look off all day long and could then keep on driving and keep it in the lane. Now I look off in the distance and my car immediately starts going in that direction. It's your vision. So I'm sure that when you heard that sound of the cell phone ringing, that for just a split second, just a moment, you thought, is that my phone? Should, should I answer this phone? Is, is that me? You probably saw me with the phone up in the air, and you still had that moment of cortisol shooting through your body and adrenaline thinking, oh my gosh, I wonder who it could be. 
What is going on? I've got to answer. Decisions, right? To answer or not to answer. We used to say in Montgomery that if your phone rings, we encourage you to leave it on during the service. If the phone rings for the answer, and when somebody says they've waited to her, hey, what do you do? Say, well, I'm at church in the Nativity, and you should be too. Right? Well, that's not that. But we all have these decisions to make, and for many, when it comes to phone or electronic media, it's not even a decision. Because we are so of this device and looking at it, that it becomes almost involuntary. Right? You're going to look at it regardless. Even if your phone's not on you, I guarantee you everyone's had that phantom vibration in your pocket. Thinking, it's my phone. Studies show that the average American checks their phone during waking hours 160 times a day. There are a lot of people checking a lot more than that. That's about one time every 10 minutes. What we pay attention to can begin to influence our lives, particularly on social media. What am I doing? What am I not doing? Why are we having so much fun? We never have that kind of fun on family vacation. You know, what? why are they doing? Why don't they look like they're yelling at the kids, right? That's what I do on vacation. What's going on? Why is I too perfect? Why am I something less than? And before long, we are filtering out our images so that we can pretend that everything is hunky dory, right? And that then begins to influence our action. Maybe what we buy for our home. What kind of home we buy? What we do here? Where we go on vacation? This, that. It starts dictating our whole lives. And this is not a sermon about the dangers of social media. And I'm not pointing fingers or casting stones. I'm giving a sermon. And this is sitting right next to me. It's a huge temptation. I just think, maybe I'll just check my email just for a second. Right? Nobody's going to care about that, are you? And cell phone is just one example, isn't it? But we all make a lot of other decisions, and decisions that are very important, that have much deeper ramifications for us, for our communities, for our lives. We do it in the midst of a troubled world, one in which we are looking for security, one in which we are looking for comfort. We're looking for a safe place to find ourselves. At least I, I don't know about you. I just want to feel okay. I just want to feel like tomorrow is going to be better than yesterday. And then maybe I'll make it. Right? And maybe my kids won't end up in jail. They're good kids, right? But we still think that. Can't help it. Maybe it's your investment. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's your political allegiance. That's big these days, isn't it? And we are doing it in the midst of a world that tells us that there are places to go, people to see, and we have to go, go, go. And I don't know about you, but I often place other things at the top of the list. Things that I know probably shouldn't be at the top of the list. Kind of replacing the best for the good. It's not bad in and of itself, right? It's be worse than ever. I don't know, I guess it's very, very good life. And we all do it. It's this hierarchy of value. This is more than that, and we live by it. We ascribe ultimate value to something or expect that it will give us fulfillment. We place it at the top and it serves as our function of the We need God. That's why you're here. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's success. Right? We've all been there one time or another. The young man who decides that success and striving and climbing the ladder is more important than a baseball game, he is not free to make a decision between that game and entertaining bars. Acceptance. The woman who wants acceptance from friends, from community, from society is not free when she is invited to an important functional organization or when something starts up at that functional organization standing up. We become slaves. We become slaves to what we think we should want, what the world tells us we should want, to 
the gods that we serve, and I mean gods with a small g, I do it. Maybe I'm preaching to myself. That's usually what I'm doing. It's always something I'm struggling with. And these other things, they cannot be false. They cannot deliver us. They cannot save us. And ultimately, they enslave us. They empty us. And they diminish us. They empty us of life, even though for a split second we think, ah, it's not sure how it's their It's on your Facebook post. Boy, I matter now, don't I? This is just great. I'm, I'm important. People like me, right? We're the Sally Fields of Dothan. For those of you who are old enough to remember that one, they like me. They really like me. And yet, the next time when it's 19 or 18, what happened? Oh, no. I'm less than. So, I want to say this. Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> The most important decision that we will ever make, the most important decision that we will ever make is to decide who or what will function as our real God. Decisions. Why I'm talking about this today is I'm thinking about our lesson from Hebrew Scriptures from the Old Testament in Samuel. Right? I'm, I, I always come thinking I'm going to preach on the Gospel. Well, I'm going back, back to the time of the Judges. So 1 Samuel, God had freed the people of Israel from bondage in Egypt. It's now the time of the judges. They were a people like no other. They didn't need a king, right? They were raising up leaders from among themselves to govern themselves, to say what they should or shouldn't do. They weren't looking at the world around them. They were looking at God. And so what happens is probably I would have been the first one in line to say this. Samuel, you are old. Boomer, it's time to retire, right? We want a king. We're looking around. We want to be like other nations. Does that sound familiar? We want to be like everybody else. Look at them. They just look so happy with a king. It looks like they're so successful. Give us that. You know, filter out our image with a king, Samuel. So Samuel gets all down in the mouth and he says, God, they don't like me. They're abandoning me. It's all my fault. And God says, no, it's not you. It's me. They don't trust my power. They don't trust those times where I feel absent and yet I'm working for them. They don't trust those moments of darkness and patience that lead to the light. God, I'm not enough for them. So give them what they want. But then God tells Samuel to tell the people of Israel something very important, and he tells it to each one of us today about the small kings in our lives, the things that rule us. He says, tell them what their kings are going to be like, the ones that will reign over them. He will take your sons and appoint them to war. He will take your daughters and make them servants. He will take the best of your fields and your labor, and he will take it for himself. He will take what belongs to you and He will make it His. And He will empty you. And so it continues today. This isn't some, something that was written 5,000, 4,000 years ago, right? Or 1,500 years ago. This is happening today. The words of Samuel are for you and for me. He will take. She will take. It will take. They will take and take and take and take until you are a shell of a human being. Until you are not free to make decisions for yourself. For when the things that we worship are not rooted in God, we run the risk of turning other things and people into our gods. And I think that's kind of what's going on in today's gospel. I mean, you think, well, Jesus is kind of being rude to his mom and his brothers and sisters, right? That's not very nice. If I said that to my mother, she'd snatch me up, right? Or she'd talk about me to my sisters. John's not being very nice to me. But that's not what Jesus does, is it? No. You see, in the ancient world, family became an idol. It became something people worshipped. 
And they would do it to the exclusion of others, to the detriment of others, to the punishment of others, to the death of others. And so Jesus says, no, I I love my family. I'm sure he said that, right? His actions show that. But he said, here are my brothers and my sisters and my mother. It's the people of God. It's the people who focus on God and who follow the will of God. And we all do it. I do it. I'm making other things God all the time. Y'all, this is a skit that I saw done in like a Cirque du Soleil. They say that Samuel Miller um, originated this. It's a story about a clown, which I guess that's all Cirque du Soleil stories, isn't it? They're all clowns. So this clown, you can tell by what, what he's doing on stage is he's searching for these lost keys, right? And there's this street light that is in the middle of the stage, and he's searching all around in the light. Searching here, searching there. He finds a police officer. He recruits the officer in to help him find his keys. And then the officer says, and you kind of have to figure it out because they don't use words, right? But um, the officer is saying, well, did you lose your keys here? And he says, no, no, no. I didn't lose them here. I lost them over there. And he points to the dark side of the stage. Well, if you lost them over there, why are you here? Well, this is, this is where the light is, right? Sometimes the light of the world and what glimmers and shines takes us over. It's what we look at. It's what we seek. And sometimes life isn't found there. You all remember Little Shop of Horrors, Seymour? He finds the plant Audrey too, and he thinks it's going to give him riches. It's going to help him get the girl, Right? It's going to make all of his dreams come true. It's only one little thing, right? The the plant likes blood. So he begins to give him blood. First he starts by giving him some from his finger, and then he starts by giving him a little bit more. He gets animal blood, but it likes human blood. And so what happens? Eventually he begins to kill for it and gives in, and the plant ultimately eats him alive. It kills him and takes over the world. The world gives us a taste and we are hooked. The accolades, the success, the money, the whatever it is, the drugs, the sex, you fill in the blank. We all have it. And we give our blood thinking it will give us life. But it never will. It will never save us. We have decisions to make this day, very important ones, much more important than politics, what public figures are doing, more important than our investment accounts in the economy. You see, it's a choice of hope, and it's a choice of life. But there are places to go and people to see. Got to keep moving, got to keep going, got to keep striving. What are you striving for today? Before you answer it, think about this. Where do your feet lead you? Where do your feet take you? Where does your vision take you? Where do you invest your time and your talent and your treasure? If it is in this world and you're placing that at the top, you're exchanging the best for the good. You're looking for fulfillment and for peace and security in a source that does not have it to give and it will enslave you and it will diminish you and empty your life of meaning. Make no mistake about this. When we read Hebrew scriptures, we are not reading about something that happened long ago. We are, but the exodus continues today for each and every one of us. Everyone in this nave is going through an exodus and you'll go through it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. God is leading you as he told the people of Israel in today's Old Testament lesson. I brought them up out of Egypt, out of slavery, and I gave them life. And God is doing that for you and me today. So as we incline our hearts to God through worship and prayer, and that's where it begins 
It begins here. It begins in relationship. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus walked among us. These are my brothers. These are my sisters. This is my mother. It is the community gathered so that God can work through us to help others. So that when you have to cross your fingers during the creed, I'll be there to help you out. And when I have to do it, Taylor's going to be there to help me out. Right? That's why we're here. That's why this isn't just something more that we do on our electronic devices. We walk physically in the flesh through that back door. And I shake your hand and I talk to you and I hug you and I know your life. Like you know mine. And together we walk. We walk in this exodus to freedom. As we do that, God will bless us in incomprehensible ways. As Augustine said, we imitate what we adore. We become like the God we worship. Oh God, save us from settling for too little. From today's anthem, High King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. O ruler of all. O ruler of all. Amen. I told Debbie I would do this, not obeying my rules. Please stand and let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. prayers of the people are form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless
Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Pat, Marilyn, Philip, and Nani, and give them courage and hope in their troubles. Bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, for those prayers and concerns that we have spoken aloud, those named in our hearts and those known only to you, we offer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. May not have loved you with our whole heart, may not have loved you with our whole mind, may not have loved our neighbors as ourselves. May not have loved you with our whole heart, may not have loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Greet somebody you don't know. I know most of y'all. God's peace. Peace of the Lord. It's peace. Peace of the Lord. God's peace. Peace. God's peace. Peace, Mr. George. God's peace. Peace of the Lord. God's peace. How are y'all? God's peace. Thank you for being here. It's so I love all y'all's voices. They're so amazing. That desk can. Taylor, thank you for letting peace. Thank you for letting me use you as my example. <laughs> brother. That's right. You never want somebody pointing at you and calling your name from the pulpit, do you? You! All right, that's terrible. Um, anyway, welcome. On behalf of everybody at Nativity, we are blessed by your presence and are so glad that you're here. If you are visiting today, if you haven't been here before, please fill out one of the forms in the uh, pews or give it to an usher. Let them know so that we know who you are so that we can welcome you. Brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, to this family of God as we walk together. So thank you and welcome. Choir, wow, the desk can't gave me, I felt like I was levitating up here. This is great. So thank you all very much. Uh, Stuart has a quick announcement about the rescue mission, one of the many ways that we go out into the world to love and serve as God has called us, and that is a part of what we do to be community, right? God speaks to us through that.
Thank you, Stuart, and for all of those who lead and participate in that important ministry. Father Randy had a wedding that he is uh, officiating at and helping with and had this plan before he came to join us here. So we certainly wish Darla and Father Randy safe travels wherever they are. If they're watching this morning, um, we are certainly blessed by their presence here with us as a part of this family and are going to be blessed by his leadership. But he'll be back next week, so rest easy, right? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Continue with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 361. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, our Lord took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Jesus Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was broken for you, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, the bread of heaven body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is broken for you, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was broken for you, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, the bread of heaven.
On page 365, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do not live in fear. Remember that God made you, God loves you, and God in God's loving kindness will never forsake you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.